The Art of Seduction by Robert Greene offers a deep dive into the world of seduction, not just in the romantic sense, but as a broader form of influence. Greene meticulously breaks down various seductive characters, from the siren to the charmer, the coquette to the star. Each character represents a unique style of allure and persuasion, accompanied by historical examples that bring the traits of these archetypes to life. By exploring these characters, readers can identify patterns in human behavior and understand the motivations behind certain actions. Furthermore, Green also delves into anti-seductive behaviors, helping readers identify and avoid pitfalls in interpersonal dynamics. The book serves as a comprehensive guide, showcasing the tactics and strategies that have been employed by some of history's most captivating figures. It's not just about romantic enticement, but about understanding human psychology and mastering the art of influence and attraction in any setting. Reading it equips one with a nuanced understanding of social dynamics, making interactions more insightful and engaging. We are going to analyze all the main ideas of the book in this animated book summary, so get ready to dive deep. Before we dive into the first idea, if you are a visual learner, you have to check our app, Morphosis. We have animated book summary videos for the best self-development and business books. Click the link in the description to get a seven-day free trial and learn from hundreds of animated book summaries. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we upload free videos. Idea 1. Types of Seductive Characters When it comes to the art of seduction, people typically exhibit certain characteristics that define their seductive style. These distinct styles often mirror certain archetypes that have their own unique appeal. For instance, there's the siren, typically a woman, who's intriguing and sexually charismatic, drawing others in with her mysterious allure. The rake, usually a man, is intensely focused on the object of his desire, making them feel uniquely wanted. The ideal lover embodies the fantasy of their target, knowing exactly what they want and presenting themselves as the perfect match. The dandy blurs conventional gender lines, using their unconventional charm to captivate. The natural is free-spirited, their seductive power coming from their innocence and spontaneity. The charmer uses their understanding of human nature to make others feel special while the charismatic uses their strong personality to captivate. The star radiates a compelling allure that others aspire to, while the coquette toys with others' emotions to create intrigue. Each type has a unique approach and appeal, creating an individual allure in the dance of seduction. Idea 2. Types of Seductive Characters – The Siren A siren, in terms of seduction, is usually a woman who is captivating and confident, oozing with a powerful and enticing aura. She's able to enchant people with her undeniable allure, largely driven by her strong sexual charisma. The allure of a siren is rooted in her capacity to make those around her feel singularly desired, intensifying their attraction to her. Even though she keeps a distance, preserving an element of unattainability, it only fuels the desire more. She plays with fantasies, creating a world so fascinating that one can't help but feel drawn into her spell. It's her skill in captivating the imagination that gives the siren her powerful charm. Idea 3. Types of Seductive Characters – The Rake The rake is typically a man who is passionate, all consumed by a desire that he freely expresses, making those he targets feel uniquely wanted. He can't help but be attracted to beauty, and his charm lies in his unabashed lust for life and love. Rakes are often known for their ability to make someone feel as though they're the center of their world, an object of intense, undivided attention. This intensity, mixed with a hint of danger due to his reputation, creates a potent allure. Despite his possibly fleeting attention, the allure of a rake is in the whirlwind of passion, and the feeling of being profoundly desired. If you like the video so far, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we upload more animated book summaries. Also, leave a comment if you agree or disagree with the ideas of this book. We read all your comments. Thank you for your support. Now let's continue.
Idea 4. Types of Seductive Characters – The Ideal Lover The ideal lover is someone who excels in understanding the needs and desires of their object of interest. They're capable of morphing into the perfect partner for anyone they desire, presenting themselves as a dream come true. This character is adept at recognizing what is missing in a person's life, what they yearn for, whether it be adventure, romance, understanding, or companionship. The ideal lover then embodies these missing qualities, providing the illusion of completeness and fulfilling hidden dreams. Their allure is based on this ability to reflect and personify their partner's deepest desires and to make them feel seen, heard, and profoundly understood. Idea 5. Types of Seductive Characters – The Dandy The Dandy is a unique type of seducer who defies the usual expectations and norms. This character blurs traditional gender roles and societal conventions, creating an air of mystery and intrigue. The Dandy is self-focused and aesthetically pleasing, often highly fashion-conscious and flamboyant, their charm lies in their individuality and the excitement that comes with the unexpected. They create an aura of freedom, making those around them feel as if they can break free from societal constraints. The dandy's allure is their ability to stand out and their refusal to be defined by ordinary standards, which makes them fascinating and irresistible to many. Idea 6. Types of Seductive Characters – The Natural the natural is a seducer who embodies a sense of spontaneity, authenticity, and ease. Unlike the more calculated and deliberate seducers, the natural exudes a childlike innocence and charm. This character appeals to the part of us that yearns for a simpler, less complicated world. Their open and genuine nature draws others in, as does their playful and spontaneous spirit. Being around a natural feels refreshing like a return to a less guarded, more straightforward way of being. They captivate by simply being themselves, not putting on airs or trying to impress. This effortless charm and lack of artifice is where the natural's seductive power lies. Idea 7. Types of seductive characters. The Coquette. The Coquette is a master of push and pull, of drawing people in and then maintaining a tantalizing distance. They're experts at creating an air of mystery and intrigue, making people chase after them and then never fully delivering what's expected. This flirtatious playfulness is their trademark. They can be both alluring and a little frustrating, but this is where their charm lies. The coquette knows that the thrill of the chase often surpasses the satisfaction of the catch. They keep their admirers guessing in a state of constant desire. Their ability to remain elusive and always slightly out of reach is what makes the coquette so irresistible. Idea 8. Types of Seductive Characters The Charmer A charmer is someone who captivates through their understanding of others and their ability to make people feel good about themselves. Unlike those who seduce through allure or enigma, charmers focus on their target, making them feel important and valued. They are skilled listeners and communicators, often exuding warmth and understanding. They excel in smoothing over conflicts and they're able to appeal to different kinds of people. They are agreeable and supportive, which fosters a sense of comfort and trust. This character's charm lies in their ability to create a positive and uplifting environment, making their target feel special, seen and appreciated. Their charm is about the other person, not about themselves. Idea 9. Types of Seductive Characters The Charismatic The Charismatic is a seducer who commands attention through their personal magnetism and strong presence. They often have a sense of self-assuredness and confidence that people find compelling. A charismatic person is not only confident but also passionate, and this passion often extends to their ideas and visions. They have a natural ability to inspire others and generate excitement. Their presence is felt and remembered. They leave a strong impression on others with their words and actions. The key to their seductive charm is their ability to make those around them feel invigorated and motivated, leaving people feeling better 
or more energized after interactions. Their allure is tied to their energy, their strength of character, and the belief they inspire in others. Idea 10. Types of Seductive Characters – The Star A star is a seductive character who shines brightly, standing out from the crowd with their uniqueness. They possess an undeniable allure that people aspire to or are drawn towards. Stars are often distinguished by their glamour, their style, or their exceptional talent. They tend to captivate others with their radiant energy, charm, and a certain aura of superiority or exclusivity. What makes a star alluring is their ability to create a sense of awe and fascination. They present a world that seems more exciting, more glamorous than everyday life. Their ability to draw attention and keep it is their charm, and they often ignite others' dreams and aspirations through their own shining example. Idea 11. Phases of Seduction Seduction is often seen as an art, a process that unfolds in stages rather than something that occurs spontaneously. Initially, the seducer chooses the right person, someone susceptible to their charms, then creates a sense of safety around them. Gradually, they start to send mixed signals, which spark interest and curiosity. They then present themselves as the embodiment of desire, creating a strong need within the other person. The seducer masterfully hints at their interest, carefully entering their target spirit and creating an irresistible temptation. The process continues as they keep their target in suspense, balancing familiarity with surprise. They might use evocative language to stir emotions, pay meticulous attention to details and ensure their presence feels special. They may show vulnerability to make their target feel special and then confuse reality with desire. They work to isolate their target from their usual surroundings, giving them the feeling of being in a different world. The seducer may prove their love or dedication and elicit feelings of nostalgia to make their target long for their presence. By breaking norms and boundaries, they maintain their allure and surprise. They make use of physical attraction, take calculated risks, and carefully navigate the aftermath to maintain the allure. Through these stages, the seducer navigates the intricate dance of attraction, creating an intense connection that's hard to resist. Idea 12. Choose the right victim. Choosing the right person to seduce, often referred to as the victim, is a critical first step in the art of seduction. This doesn't mean the person is helpless, rather, it's about identifying someone who is receptive to your charm and seductive tactics. This individual may have certain vulnerabilities, unmet needs or desires that make them more likely to respond to your advances. It's about understanding human psychology and recognizing who might be open to the allure of seduction. The right victim could be someone looking for adventure craving attention or needing affirmation. Identifying the right person involves keen observation, empathy, and understanding of human nature. Idea 13. Create a false sense of security. Creating a false sense of security is a crucial part of the seduction process. The idea here is to make the person you're trying to seduce feel comfortable and safe around you. You can achieve this by being non-threatening, friendly, and empathetic. The goal is to ensure that the other person lets down their guard, making it easier for you to influence their feelings and actions. You should aim to make the person feel understood and accepted, providing a comforting presence that they can trust. This is not about manipulation, but about establishing a connection where the other person feels free to express themselves, setting the stage for deeper engagement and attraction. Idea 14. Send mixed signals. Sending mixed signals is an interesting aspect of the art of seduction. It involves the deliberate alternation between conflicting messages, creating a sense of intrigue and mystery. This could mean being warm and attentive one moment and somewhat distant the next. The uncertainty stirs curiosity as the person on the receiving end is left wondering about the shift in behavior. This strategy keeps the other person engaged as the unpredictability provokes interest and makes them want to understand what's going on. 
By not being too straightforward or predictable, you become more intriguing. It's this balance between revealing and concealing, between interest and indifference, that keeps the other person hooked, wanting to decipher the enigma that you are. Idea 15. Appear to be an object of desire. Appearing to be an object of desire is a seductive strategy that relies on creating an image of oneself as highly desirable. It's about presenting oneself in a way that embodies what the other person may desire or find attractive. This could be through physical attractiveness, intelligence, confidence, charisma, or other qualities that captivate people's attention. By positioning yourself as someone who is sought after, you create a sense of value and desirability around yourself. The allure lies in the perceived validation and competition that comes with being desired by others. This feeling of competition can spark an increased interest in you, making you appear more appealing. It's a matter of human psychology. We often want what others want or what seems hard to get. Idea 16. Create a need. Creating a need in someone's mind is a potent aspect of seduction. It revolves around identifying or even subtly highlighting an unfulfilled need or desire in the other person, then positioning oneself as the solution. This need could be emotional, such as the need for validation, companionship or excitement. It could also be psychological, such as the need for adventure or novelty. By fulfilling or promising to fulfill this need, you become a person of great significance in their life. The key here is to make your presence feel essential, so much so that your absence creates a void. This strategy is powerful because it taps into the basic human instinct to seek fulfillment of our needs and desires. Idea 17. Master the art of insinuation. Mastering the art of insinuation is about subtle influence and suggestion. It involves planting ideas or thoughts in the other person's mind without being overtly direct. This could mean hinting at your interest, subtly implying compliments, or suggesting possibilities for the future. It's a way of sparking imagination and desire without making explicit statements. Insinuation allows the other person to read between the lines and interpret your intentions in their own way, often leading them to believe that these thoughts originated from themselves. This subtlety makes the seduction process feel more natural and less forceful, creating an atmosphere of intrigue and shared secrets. The art of insinuation can be incredibly captivating as it taps into the power of suggestion and imagination. Idea 18. Enter their spirit. Entering someone's spirit is a profound part of the seduction process. It's about deeply understanding the other person's perspective, their feelings, and their worldview. This understanding allows you to connect with them on a deeper level, mirroring their emotions, validating their experiences, and aligning your actions with their expectations. This emotional alignment can be incredibly captivating, as it makes the other person feel seen, understood, and appreciated. This is not about imitation, but rather about empathy and genuine connection. By entering their spirit, you become a comforting and familiar presence in their life, someone who understands them in ways that others don't. This creates a bond that goes beyond surface-level attraction, tapping into deeper emotional connections. Idea 19. Create Temptation. Creating temptation is a significant part of the art of seduction. It involves sparking a strong desire within the person you're attempting to seduce. This might be achieved by presenting something they desire, presenting yourself as an embodiment of this desire, or hinting at the thrill or satisfaction that could come from giving in to this temptation. It's about building anticipation and stirring curiosity, making the other person long for the promise of pleasure or fulfillment. The idea of the forbidden or the tantalizingly out of reach can often enhance this sense of temptation. The trick lies in not satisfying this desire too quickly, maintaining the allure and the excitement of the chase. Idea 20. Keep them in suspense. Keeping someone in suspense is an essential tactic in the art of seduction. 
It revolves around creating a sense of anticipation and unpredictability that keeps the other person engaged and intrigued. This might involve varying your behavior or responses, revealing information bit by bit, or introducing unexpected twists in your interactions. The essence of suspense is the unknown, the not yet revealed. It's about keeping the other person guessing, making them eager to find out more. The uncertainty generated by suspense is intriguing because it stimulates curiosity and the desire to solve the mystery. This approach helps sustain interest and excitement over a longer period, maintaining the allure and attraction. Idea 21. Use the demonic power of words. The concept of using the demonic power of words involves leveraging language as a tool for seduction. Words have the ability to captivate, charm, and influence. They can stir emotions, paint pictures, and create atmospheres. This idea revolves around mastering the art of conversation, using carefully chosen words and phrases to trigger desired responses. For example, you can use words to flatter, comfort, excite, or intrigue the other person. The key here is to be mindful of the effect your words have, carefully selecting your language to match the mood and expectations of the other person. The demonic power refers not to anything negative or harmful, but rather to the mesmerizing power words can wield when used skillfully. It's about making your words enchanting, irresistible, and memorable. Idea 22. Pay attention to detail. Paying attention to detail is an integral part of seduction. It involves noticing and appreciating the small things about the other person, such as their preferences, habits, or quirks. This could be remembering their favorite food, noticing when they change their hairstyle, or even appreciating their unique way of thinking or doing things. Paying attention to these details shows that you genuinely care and are truly interested in them. It also allows you to personalize your interactions, making them feel special and valued. Moreover, it aids in creating a deeper connection as it indicates that you're willing to invest time and effort into understanding them better. This level of attentiveness can make the other person feel appreciated and understood, enhancing your appeal. Idea 23. Poeticize your presence. Poeticizing your presence is about elevating the ordinary to the extraordinary in the eyes of the person you're trying to seduce. This means imbuing your actions, words, and even your silence with an air of mystery, intrigue, or beauty that captivates the other person's attention and imagination. It could be in the form of a memorable gesture, a unique personal style, or an enchanting way of expressing yourself. The goal is to create a certain aura around you that intrigues and enthralls, making your presence a source of delight and fascination. This poeticized presence can spark curiosity, admiration, and desire, adding a magical quality to your interactions and making you unforgettable in their eyes. Idea 24. Disarm through strategic weakness and vulnerability. Disarming through strategic weakness and vulnerability involves revealing certain aspects of your own flaws or insecurities to the person you're trying to seduce. This strategic vulnerability helps humanize you, making you seem more approachable and relatable. It can also trigger protective or nurturing instincts in the other person, making them feel needed and appreciated. Showing weakness, however, doesn't mean portraying yourself as helpless or pitiable. Instead, it's about being genuine and open, allowing the other person to see beyond your public persona and connect with you on a deeper, more personal level. This approach can foster trust, empathy, and emotional intimacy, which can enhance your appeal and deepen the connection between you. Idea 25. Confuse desire and reality. Confusing desire and reality in the context of seduction involves blurring the lines between what is real and what is a product of the imagination or desire. It's about creating an enticing fantasy that captures the other person's attention and emotions. This could be through building up a mysterious or intriguing persona, playing into their dreams and fantasies, 
or constructing situations that feel surreal or dreamlike. The aim is to captivate their mind and emotions, making them more open to the allure and thrill of the seductive experience. This approach takes advantage of the human tendency to be drawn towards the mysterious and the extraordinary, making the seduction process more intriguing and irresistible. Idea 26. Isolate the victim. Isolating the victim in the seduction process is about creating a space where you and the other person can interact without distractions or interruptions. It's about fostering a sense of exclusivity and intimacy, making the other person feel special and valued. This could involve planning activities that allow for one-on-one -on -one time or engaging in deep and meaningful conversations that allow for personal connection. Isolating the other person doesn't mean cutting them off from their social circles or daily life. Rather, it's about carving out a special place for your interactions where the outside world seems to fade away. This can intensify the connection between you, making your interactions more impactful and memorable. Idea 27. Prove yourself. Proving yourself in the context of seduction implies demonstrating your worth and value to the person you're trying to attract. It's not merely about making promises or professing your feelings. Instead, it's about showing through your actions and behavior that you're worthy of their attention and affection. You can prove yourself by being reliable, understanding, and respectful, as well as by demonstrating qualities they admire or desire, such as confidence, intelligence, or kindness. You might also show your commitment to them by investing time, effort, and emotions in your relationship. This approach can help foster trust, admiration, and respect, enhancing your attractiveness and appeal in their eyes. Idea 28. Effect a regression. Effecting a regression is about tapping into the person's childhood experiences or memories to generate feelings of comfort, familiarity, and nostalgia. The idea is to make them recapture a sense of innocence and simplicity, which can be both comforting and captivating. This could involve evoking their favorite childhood memories or appealing to their inner child's desires and fantasies. It's about making them feel youthful, carefree and cherished, which can enhance your attractiveness and appeal. This strategy can also help establish a deeper emotional connection as sharing personal memories and experiences can foster intimacy and trust. However, it's crucial to use this strategy with sensitivity and respect as it involves dealing with potentially vulnerable and private aspects of the person's past. Idea 29. Stir up the transgressive and taboo. Stirring up the transgressive and taboo involves inciting excitement and intrigue by breaking social norms or venturing into the forbidden. The allure lies in the thrill of the unknown or the forbidden fruit, which can stimulate a sense of novelty and adventure. This can range from innocent rule-bending, like a spontaneous late-night adventure, to exploring more profound societal taboos. The key is to maintain a balance ensuring that the transgressions are enticing and exciting rather than threatening or disconcerting. Also, it's essential to respect personal boundaries and consent while delving into these territories. When done right, this strategy can inject an element of excitement and unpredictability into your interactions, making you more appealing and irresistible. Idea 30. Use spiritual lures. Using spiritual lures refers to appealing to a person's deeper or spiritual aspects to create a compelling attraction. It is about showcasing qualities that transcend physical or material allure, such as wisdom, compassion, or inner peace. You might discuss philosophical or spiritual ideas, or you might demonstrate acts of kindness or generosity. The intent is to connect on a profound, soulful level sparking intrigue and fascination. A spiritual connection can be powerful and enduring because it taps into a person's core beliefs and values. However, it's essential to be genuine in these interactions, as authenticity is vital in establishing a profound spiritual connection. Manipulation or deception in this context can backfire, leading to distrust and disillusionment. Idea 31 
mix pleasure with pain. The notion of mixing pleasure with pain speaks to the complex nature of human emotions. In the context of seduction, it's about creating a balance of highs and lows to intensify feelings. Pleasure alone can lead to complacency, whereas when coupled with a dash of pain or anxiety, it can heighten anticipation and desire. This strategy isn't about causing harm, but introducing subtle elements of uncertainty or challenge to stimulate the other person's interest. It could be as simple as stirring mild jealousy or delaying gratification, all to magnify the pleasure when it's finally obtained. It's a dance of push and pull that keeps the seduction exciting, unpredictable and emotionally engaging. Idea 32. Give them space to fall. The concept of giving them space to fall is essentially about creating a dynamic where the other person can actively participate in the seduction process. It's about striking a balance between pursuit and retreat, making yourself desirable yet somewhat elusive. The idea is to make your presence felt, but also allow for moments of absence, sparking a longing for your return. It's akin to creating a dance of attraction and intrigue where the other person is encouraged to step forward and invest their emotions. This approach fosters a sense of autonomy, making the person feel they are choosing to fall for you, which can deepen their emotional involvement and attachment. Remember, however, this method requires skillful execution, ensuring you don't retreat so much that you appear uninterested or distant. Idea 33. Use physical lures. Physical lures play an important role in the game of seduction. They are not just about raw physical attractiveness, but also involve the way one carries themselves, how they dress, and their non-verbal communication. These aspects can create a magnetic pull towards the individual. It's about showcasing your best features and maintaining an alluring presence that catches the eye. Your posture, your voice, even the way you move can be hypnotic. A well-placed touch or a lingering look can carry potent messages, sometimes more powerful than words. This tactic is about mastering the art of silent communication, using your body to create an irresistible draw. Idea 34. Master the art of the bold move. In the dance of attraction, it is not enough to simply create an intriguing aura or engage in flirtatious banter. A bold move can sometimes be the catalyst that tips the scales in favor of seduction. This does not necessarily mean something brash or impulsive, but rather a calculated action that demonstrates your interest and intent moving beyond the realm of the ambiguous. A bold move could be an unexpected compliment, a surprising revelation about oneself, or a well-timed gesture that expresses deeper feelings. The key is in its unexpectedness and audacity, creating a sense of thrill and excitement. However, this bold move should not come across as desperate or reckless. It should feel natural, a seamless part of the interaction that feels as if it was always meant to happen. This is an art, a delicate balance between being assertive and considerate. A bold move made at the right moment can become a memorable turning point marking the transition from mere flirtation to irresistible attraction. The individual on the receiving end often perceives it as a confirmation of their desirability, making them more open to the seduction process. Idea 35. Beware of the after effects. A dance of attraction, the process of seduction, is not a path without its twists and turns. It's an enthralling journey that holds the power to stir emotions, and with heightened emotions often come unexpected consequences. This is why it's crucial to consider the after effects, the wake that is left when the dance is done. This idea places emphasis on the aftermath of your actions, on the emotional reactions and the shifts in dynamics that might follow. It's about the understanding that every choice in the game of attraction may have consequences that can alter the rapport between two people. For instance, a sudden confession of feelings might initially bring two people closer, but it could also alter the balance of power, leading to discomfort or distancing. 
A calculated act of kindness could foster fondness, yet it might also create expectations that are hard to meet in the future. In short, seduction doesn't stop once the desired effect is achieved. Like a stone thrown into a pond, the ripples of one's actions extend far beyond the initial splash. Therefore, being mindful of potential after-effects is crucial in maintaining the relationship or connection you've worked to establish, making the dance of seduction a truly intricate, delicate ballet. Idea 36. Anti-seductive behaviors. In the world of attraction and fascination, the delicate dance of allure and appeal, certain behaviors work like a repellent, driving away interest and enchantment. We may call them anti-seductive behaviors, actions and attitudes that undermine the process of seduction and may even break the mesmerizing spell that has been woven. Imagine a peacock flaunting its vibrant feathers, a dance of colors that is designed to attract attention. But suppose this peacock suddenly starts to squawk loudly and incessantly, causing discomfort to those around. This disruptive noise might overshadow the beauty of its display, driving away the attention it sought to attract. This is the essence of anti-seductive behaviors. One such behavior is being overly intrusive or insistent, failing to respect personal boundaries. Intrusion can be as subtle as asking too many personal questions or as overt as physical encroachment. But the result is the same, discomfort and a quick erosion of the attraction that might have been building. Then there is the overbearing attitude, a trait that comes across as control or dominance. While confidence can be appealing, pushing one's ideas or imposing one's will can quickly drain the magic from the dance of attraction. Negativity, too, can be a potent anti-seductive force. Consistently bringing up problems, complaining, or focusing on the negatives can taint the aura of allure and mystery, replacing fascination with aversion. In a nutshell, while the art of seduction thrives on charm, mystery, and intrigue, anti-seductive behaviors are like unruly notes in a symphony disrupting the harmony and jeopardizing the mesmerizing performance that the art of seduction aspires to be. Idea 37. Anti-seductive behaviors. Brute. In the complex tapestry of human interactions, the behavior labeled as brute stands out as an archetype of anti-seductive behavior. This term captures a set of actions that undermine the process of seduction by breaking its subtle, delicate rules and turning a dance of allure into an unpleasant experience. Consider a delicate flower. Its petals are designed to open gently to the sun, inviting bees and butterflies to partake in its nectar. But imagine if something were to force open the petals, disrupting this subtle process. The beauty of the flower would be compromised, and its natural allure would be lost. This forceful opening is akin to the brute's approach in the realm of seduction. The brute lacks the subtlety and finesse that seduction requires. Their approach is overly direct, often forceful, and lacking in the delicacy and mystery that characterizes seductive interaction. There's a sense of impatience and a rush to get to the end goal, bypassing the process that constitutes the real charm of seduction. Being overly assertive or aggressive can also be considered part of the brute's repertoire. Such behavior breaks the balance between interest and aloofness that fuels attraction, potentially making the other person uncomfortable or even scared. In essence, the brute fails to grasp the essence of seduction as a dance of intrigue, mystery, and gradual discovery. They mistake forcefulness for assertiveness and directness for honesty, disrupting the harmony and rhythm that make the art of seduction a captivating performance. Idea 38. Anti-seductive behaviors suffocator. Imagine finding yourself in a dense forest, where the trees are packed so tightly together that it's hard to move or even breathe. It's stifling, isn't it? That's how it feels to be around a person classified as the suffocator in the world of relationships and interactions. This anti-seductive character type can stifle and overwhelm others with their intense need for attachment and closeness. Suffocators tend to lack a clear sense of personal boundaries. They're the ones who may be too eager, too available, too invested in your life too soon. They may hover around, figuratively or literally, providing no space for the other person to breathe. This behavior can feel intrusive and create a sense of discomfort, 
even desperation, for some breathing room. Their emotions and actions are often dictated by an intense fear of abandonment and a deep need for validation. This results in constant texting, calling or checking in, which may start to feel like monitoring or control. Their love and affection, instead of feeling like a warm embrace, may start to feel like a smothering blanket that leaves no room for individual expression. The suffocator's intense need for closeness and validation can turn the thrilling game of seduction into a high-pressure situation. It leaves no room for the dance of mystery and allure as their overwhelming presence eclipses the needed space that allows intrigue and desire to flourish. In their fear of losing the object of their affection, suffocators may unintentionally push them away as their actions become stifling rather than enticing. Idea 39. Anti-seductive behaviors. Moralizer. Picture yourself at a colorful carnival full of laughter, games, and light-hearted fun. Then, suddenly, a stern figure steps forward, lecturing about the immorality of such frivolity. That's a good metaphor for the moralizer, a type of person who can dampen the joy of any situation with their high-handed attitudes and rigid beliefs. Moralizers tend to have a fixed perspective on life, holding strong beliefs about what's right and what's wrong. They are driven by a need to uphold their own values and morals, and they apply these standards not only to themselves, but also to the people around them. However, these standards can often be inflexible, leaving no room for the vibrant, diverse spectrum of human experience and expression. In interactions and relationships, moralizers may often come across as judgmental and self-righteous. Their need to stick to their own moral code can lead to them condemning or criticizing others who don't align with their values. This can make their company feel stifling and restrictive, like being locked in a narrow box of their rigid moral constructs. In the dance of seduction, moralizers can act as the killjoy. Their strict codes and judgment can drain the fun, spontaneity and freedom that make the seduction game enticing and enjoyable. Their stern attitudes and rigidity may serve to distance others rather than drawing them in. In essence, the moralizer's rigidity and self-righteous attitudes can turn the art of seduction into a solemn sermon, leaving little room for the playful, mysterious and exciting elements that make seduction thrilling and attractive. Idea 40. Anti-seductive behaviors. Tightwad. Picture this. You're on a promising date. The conversation is flowing and you're feeling a mutual spark. The waiter drops off the bill and suddenly a change washes over your companion. The energy shifts as they inspect every detail on the bill, questioning the cost of each item. Suddenly, the once enchanting evening seems to take a disappointing turn. This illustrates a classic behavior of a type known as the tightwad. Tightwads are individuals who are excessively cautious about spending money often to the point where it hampers their ability to enjoy life's experiences fully or build deep connections with others. This trait can be particularly off-putting in the context of seduction, which often relies on a level of generosity, spontaneity and open-handedness to create a sense of warmth and connection. Being cautious with resources isn't inherently negative. However, the issue with tightwads is that their penny-pinching goes beyond practical frugality. It often emerges as a pattern of withholding, not only in terms of money, but in other aspects as well, such as time, emotion, or affection. This can create an atmosphere of scarcity and restriction, which can be stifling and uncomfortable. In the game of attraction, a tightwad's behavior can send unintentional messages. Their excessive focus on conserving resources can be perceived as a lack of generosity or a reluctance to invest in the relationship. This can lead to a sense of imbalance and dissatisfaction, hindering the formation of a deeper connection. It's important to note that the tightwad isn't just about literal penny-pinching. It's a metaphor for any behavior that withholds generosity and fails to invest in relationships. This type of behavior can dampen the dynamics of seduction, which thrives on openness, reciprocity, and a willingness to share and invest in experiences together. Idea 41. Anti-seductive behaviors. Bumbler. 
Imagine a scene from a movie where a character can't seem to do anything right. They trip over their words, spill drinks, and generally make a mess of things. You might find it endearing in a comedy, but in real life, especially in the realm of attraction, such behavior might be less charming. This character can be seen as what is known as a bumbler. The bumbler, in the context of seduction, is a person whose actions and words often result in awkwardness or misunderstanding. They may have good intentions, but their execution is usually flawed, leading to confusion or discomfort. Rather than creating an atmosphere of enchantment or intrigue, they unintentionally provoke annoyance or even embarrassment. Bumblers can be endearing, and their awkwardness might initially come off as charming or authentic. However, if it's a consistent pattern, it can become tiring and frustrating for those around them. It can give the impression of a lack of consideration or awareness, which isn't conducive to building a sense of connection or attraction. Their lack of smoothness or finesse in social situations may signal a lack of competence or reliability, qualities that are often seen as attractive. Consistent clumsiness or mishaps can make it hard to build the trust or respect that underpins a deeper connection. Keep in mind that the bumbler isn't necessarily a person who's always physically clumsy or socially inept. The label can apply to anyone who persistently disrupts the flow of interaction or connection through their actions, whether it's through consistently poor timing, inappropriate comments, or lack of consideration for others. This can make it challenging to establish the kind of comfortable, positive interaction that successful seduction often requires. Idea 42. Anti-seductive behaviors. Windbag. The term windbag is often used to describe someone who talks excessively, usually about themselves, without much consideration for the listener's interest or engagement. In terms of creating an attractive and engaging dynamic, being a windbag is often seen as counterproductive. When someone engages in the windbag behavior, they take up the conversation space leaving little room for others to contribute. This behavior can easily come across as self-centered as the windbag appears more interested in airing their thoughts and opinions than in hearing what others have to say. The beauty of a good conversation lies in its balance. It's a dance of give and take, listening and sharing. However, when a windbag dominates, this equilibrium is disrupted. Other people in the conversation might feel unseen or unheard, which could lead to a sense of disconnection rather than the desired connection. There's a subtle but important difference between sharing about oneself as a way to connect and being self-focused to the point of dominating conversation. Sharing personal stories, thoughts and feelings can help build rapport and establish common ground but it's vital to do so in a way that invites reciprocation, keeps the other person engaged, and shows interest in their perspective. The windbag behavior can also create a perception of being out of touch with social norms and cues, which can be off-putting. It may signal a lack of emotional intelligence, as part of this skill is being aware of when and how much to speak, and recognizing when it's time to listen and show interest in others. If the goal is to create a sense of attraction and connection, being mindful of how much space one takes up in the conversation is important. In essence, it's about ensuring the dialogue is a two-way street. Idea 43, anti-seductive behaviors, reactor. In this context, the term reactor refers to someone who consistently reacts rather than acts. They tend to respond to the actions of others instead of taking the initiative which can make them seem passive or unassertive. This behavior can be anti-seductive because it may portray a lack of confidence and decision-making ability. A reactor often waits for others to take the first step or make decisions. Instead of expressing their desires or making their own choices, they defer to others. While this might seem considerate or accommodating at first, over time it can become frustrating. It may suggest that they lack the assertiveness or courage to put forth their own ideas or take charge of a situation. The behavior of a reactor can also imply a certain level of indecisiveness or insecurity. 
By continually reacting to others, they may be seen as lacking the confidence to voice their own opinions or to stand their ground. This lack of initiative can be unattractive, as it may indicate that they're unable or unwilling to take the lead when needed. In contrast, showing a level of decisiveness and initiative can be attractive qualities. They demonstrate self-confidence, assertiveness, and a sense of agency. This doesn't mean one should be domineering or dismissive of others' opinions. Instead, it's about striking a balance, expressing one's thoughts and desires while also considering and respecting those of others. So, to counteract this reactor behavior, it can be beneficial to cultivate a habit of active participation. This involves taking an active role in discussions, expressing personal preferences, and occasionally taking the lead. It's about moving from a predominantly reactive stance to a more proactive one. Idea 44. Anti-seductive behaviors. Vulgarian. Vulgarian behavior, as it's understood here, is about crassness, coarseness, or lack of refinement. A person displaying such behavior tends to lack sophistication or decorum, and this can greatly diminish their appeal. Consider a person who tends to use vulgar language excessively. Such behavior can be off-putting and may signal a lack of consideration for others. This isn't about occasional, contextual use of strong language, but rather about persistent, unnecessary vulgarity. It's the overuse that can be seen as disrespectful or inconsiderate. Then there's the question of manners and etiquette. A person who constantly disregards basic social norms may come across as rude or ill-mannered. Whether it's about interrupting people when they're speaking or ignoring personal boundaries, such behavior can be seen as thoughtless and discourteous. But vulgarian behavior isn't just about language or manners. It could also be about a general lack of sophistication or grace. For instance, a person who makes crude jokes or insensitive remarks or someone who is inconsiderate about their personal hygiene may be viewed as lacking refinement. To counteract vulgarian behavior, it might be helpful to learn about and practice good manners and etiquette. Being considerate of others, respecting personal boundaries, and using language thoughtfully can go a long way in improving one's appeal. Plus, developing a sense of sophistication or grace in behavior can help in leaving a positive impression. While authenticity is important, one should also consider the context and the comfort of others. Idea 45. Seductive environments, contexts. Seductive environments or contexts are ones that can help set the mood or stage for seduction. These are not just physical spaces, but also encompass the atmosphere, the situation, and the overall experience that engages the senses and emotions. Take, for example, a beautifully arranged room with soft lighting, warm colors, and gentle music playing in the background. This setting might create a sense of comfort, ease and intimacy, inviting deeper connection and conversation. It's not just about the room's physical features. It's about how those features work together to create a certain ambience. On a broader level, a seductive environment can be a situation or a social setting that brings out certain emotions or reactions. For instance, an adventurous trip or a thrilling activity might create a sense of excitement, bonding, and shared experience. This isn't about the specific location or activity, but about how the situation stirs emotions, sparks conversations, and encourages bonding. Creating a seductive environment, then, involves thinking about how the surroundings, the situation, and the overall experience can work together to engage the senses and emotions. It's about crafting an environment that invites connection, encourages openness, and creates a memorable experience. It's also worth noting that what might be seductive for one person might not be for another. Different people have different preferences, and it's important to consider these individual differences when creating a seductive environment. What's crucial is that the environment resonates with the person and evokes the desired emotions and reactions. If you like this video, make sure to check our app, Morphosis. It has hundreds of videos like this one, and you can watch it with the seven-day free trial offer we have. 
Just click the button in the description and start learning today. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you get notified when we upload free videos.